I came in here in January. Uh, me and Coach Elliott have a long-lasting relationship. Uh, we've known each other for about 13 years, so there really wasn't much said. There was just kind of like, hey, do what you do, and these are kind of the standards, and this is what we need to fix. Um, so some of the things we talked about was attitude, effort, discipline, accountability, and then just getting more out of the athletes and making them bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah, so where, where we started and where we are now are totally different places, right? So um, everything I do is, is kind of in a linear progression, so in a straight line and anything in life, I feel like we're always taking baby steps and trying to figure things out, whether it's in the professional realm, the athletic realm, or you know, just being a child. Uh, so we've taken baby steps and we've talked about it. We've brought perception to those things that we're doing. And the way I look at it when developing a team, especially a culture and a young man, is we want to break down these barriers like this. I can't do this. Um, and we want our thoughts to become our actions. So we got to have positive thoughts and get rid of the negative thoughts. Now with that, how do we do that? We do that through hard work. We do that through strain. We doing that with modalities and things with that, man, I can't believe I just did that attitude. But once I get to the other side of that obstacle, you know, I have that perception to say, wow, maybe I can go a little bit further. And then, then that's my job to take the next step. So where we are now is totally different from where we started. Um, and that's all in the positive direction. I think the guys started really, really fast as far as getting to know me and what I do and how I act and kind of my expectations on everything. And what has developed is that they've absorbed that stuff in an educational period, they've absorbed that. And now we're kind of forming the culture that we want to be within the locker room. And here in the next couple of weeks, going into camp, into the first phase of our season, we'll see the next jump. And that's kind of the players taking over the leadership roles. It's not so much coach to player anymore, it's going to be player to player. Um, you know, this offseason has definitely been different, especially with like a new coach. So. Um, I feel like the main thing he's been trying to get out of us is just holding us accountable, just being more disciplined, and just being a mental tough team. So I feel like that's what we needed last year in those, those close games, what we needed to finish, we just needed to be more mentally tough and just have discipline. So I feel like that's what he's instilling in us and trying to create us a, a conference championship team. How do, I, how do we develop leadership between the players? I think one, as a leader in my position, taking care of the day-to-day -day efforts of the team, the accountability, the discipline, and setting the standard for the program on a day-to-day -day basis is like, I gotta walk that line, right? So I gotta be as consistent as possible. When the players see that, um, then you know it's a lot easier for them to produce that because you got to understand i think most people don't understand is we're still just dealing with young men um or, or, or you know uh, kind of the transition from uh being a high school athlete to a college athlete we're going from boy to man they're going to be the first time on their life by themselves so they got to learn to do a lot of things by by themselves for the first time so uh again the baby step process is my job to set expectations and which create habits so what we've done as a as a uh, as a staff is coach elliott myself and all the other coaches we put these players on what we call a pulse group and that's right now 10 players we've identified those guys as guys that have resilience have some grit and have some, you know, have been to the battle, so to speak. Um, and they kind of know and can bring better perception on things than maybe a younger guy. And what we do is, you know, we talk to those guys. We have more conversations with those guys, maybe behind closed doors. And we say, hey, listen, this happened today. This is what I would have done. This is what I saw you do. So again, it's all about taking baby steps and helping these kids out, but it's acquiring knowledge because knowledge is power. We're absorbing that knowledge, but then there's also that action plan, and which is the most important thing in leadership. You know, leading by example is great, but when you have the guy to the right and the guy to the left that needs your help, you're gonna have to use your words vocally. So that's kind of the next phase in the process, but you know, as far as educating them, we do that, and then we kind of just hold their hand through the process until they become comfortable just like anything else. I try to be more vocal and lead by example. Leading by example is definitely huge because you can't be vocal if you're not leading by example, no one's gonna follow you. So I feel like leading by example is step one and then as you preach to the people where you actually showing them, they'll follow them. Yeah, as far as my process when it goes training the body, it's the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, I just stay to the basics. 
I try to do the basics extremely, extremely well. Um, you know, we're not always, it's very hard to be perfect. We're not, we're, so we're always chasing perfection, right? And that's kind of how we get to greatness. Um, as far as everything that I'm concerned with is more, you know, the body, so to speak, takes a period of time. Um, generally speaking, these kids aren't gonna hit their genetic peak till probably 26 to 28 years old. So I have a small time with them to kind of set up the foundation and I keep that simple and basic. What I really focus on is the how we're doing it. Um, and that's gonna be the mentality aspect of it, right? So I always kind of break it up into three things. What, what are we doing? You know, that's kind of the X's and O's of strength and conditioning in football. We come up with the plan and then we gotta have great reason behind it. What is the why? Does it make sense scientifically? Is it balanced? Are we gonna benefit from this? And then where I think I kind of put myself out there and do things a little different across the country is I try to manipulate that how as much as I can. And I've found out over the last 16 seasons, plus my four as a player, is that there's always more left in the tank. So I'm trying to manipulate that and show the guys that they always got more. Cause I really think that talent uh, isn't the threshold when it comes to college athletics. I really think it comes down to my attitude and my effort. What am I willing to do? How am I willing to do it? And how am I gonna keep my, uh, my attitude positive through all that um, uh, adversity that I might face in the fo college football season? Uh, just knowing in the offense that, you know, quarterback runs the ball a lot. So just trying to put on some extra weight just so I could take those hits and be durable throughout the season. So. Uh, my goal was during the offseason to gain 225 pounds to be 225. So I've gotten around there and maybe a little bit more. So just trying to maintain that and, you know, with the running we're doing, just maintain that, still eating, and just trying to make sure my body is well uh, for the season. The team probably has made the most significant gains in all areas. I think we're way more disciplined. I think we're way more accountable. Uh, we're definitely in better shape. Uh, we've seen significant weight gain and body transformation, and I think that's all part of the process. And I think that generally always leads to a stronger, a mentally strong or mentally tougher team. And I think when I'm building a team, and I've done this a few times now, is that the mentally tough teams are going to be the teams at the end of the season that are competing for championships. And that's my expectation. That's our expectation. That's kind of where we set our goals this season. Right? Um, so I think that's kind of, it's all encompassing. It's a tough question, right? Because the process of the process is very, um, uh, is very organic, so to speak. As long as we stay detail oriented and consistent in it, uh, we kind of get and have a great plan. Uh, that how, that mentality aspect, it kind of takes, takes control towards the end of the process. You know, I think I try to make every day. So the toughest thing I think the team has to do is just, understanding they got to progress like no day is the same uh, of course we have our down days because i got to be smart with training the kids and we can't break them down um, physically every single day so i have to have a paradise model on what we're doing just like coach elliot needs to do with practice uh, we can't hit every day we can't run as hard as we're supposed to every day um, but uh probably for me i think the hardest thing for this team right now to understand is the next day is the next day, right? The next play is the next play. So I create this narrative that the next day is always gonna to be tougher. So mentally they have to get over that hurdle every single day. That way, when they make it through the tough, they can have perception and look back and say, hey, I can see the progress here. He's right. We can do this together if we keep on going and we keep on listening and we trust the process.